So the prophet says, go to Judah. Then he says something very interesting. He changes gears in this, in this passage. In Samuel 22. He says, Saul is over in another part of the territory, taking it easy under a shade tree. And that tree happens to be, does anybody know what kind of tree it is? Unless you're reading ahead of me, you probably don't. Most, it, would, most, it wouldn't be something you would typically think about. He was sitting under a tamarisk tree. Well, so what's the big deal about that? The tamarisk tree is an evergreen tree. And it's the tree that Abraham planted in Genesis 21 when he called on Olam, El, everlasting God, and planted an evergreen tree. He did two things that were prophetic there. This was toward the end of the journey with Abraham. Isaac has been born. God has fulfilled the promises he gave to this man. And Abraham is sort of doing what he's doing here is commemorating the faithfulness of God and, and acknowledging that God has done everything he promised him he would do. So he calls on him as Olam, everlasting God, which means the God outside of time who is bigger than my past, bigger than the present, bigger than the future, because this is the God outside of time. And, and in my past, when he called me, he knew the weaknesses I had. So he knew I would lie about Sarah being my wife and say she's my sister twice. He knew that on the journey until my faith was strengthened to a certain point, I would literally laugh in God's face when he said, this is still going to happen. You're going to have a child through Sarah. God knew those weaknesses existed, but the God outside of time that could see not only where Abraham was, but where Abraham would be. And not only do I see these weaknesses in him, but I see what I'm going to do with him. And I'm going to transform him into a covenant keeper. And I'm going to transform him into a person of faith. And I'm going to transform him into my friend, so the God outside of time that's bigger than our mistakes, bigger than our failures, bigger than yesterday, today, and tomorrow, who's, who's over all of that, Abraham says, you're bigger than all of that. And he calls on everlasting God, and then he plants an evergreen tree, a tamarisk tree, which is a covenant tree. It symbolized covenant because of the evergreen aspect, that it didn't die. It was eternal in a in a symbolic sense. The tamarisk, tamarisk tree was a slow growing tree, but it lived a long time. It was able to go deep with its root into the soil, way down to the water. And because of that, it grew into uh, 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 the best shade tree in all of Israel. But it grew so slowly because of the type tree and because of the setting it was in that scholars say no one would ever plant a tamarisk tree for his or herself. Because you, they would know, the person would know, they will never reap the benefit of that tree. You would only plant a tamarisk tree for the coming generations. So one lexicon said, and I quote, when Abraham planted this tree, he was saying to his children and grandchildren, you will sit under the shade of my covenant with God. These two pictures, the everlast, everlasting God, evergreen, are the pictures God gave me years ago in the dream where I boxed five giants. And I knocked out a giant per round for five rounds. 
and I alternated fists. Knocked one out in the first round, knocked another one out in the second, third, fourth, fifth. And I stepped out of the boxing ring in the dream, and I held up both gloves, and I said, if you're going to take out the Giants in this season, you're going to have to wear these two gloves. One said Everlast, and one said Evergreen. That's what drove me to the study of Abraham in Genesis 21:33, And I realized why he called on everlasting God and planted an, an evergreen tree. He was saying, you're the God who's bigger than my failures, bigger, bigger than my past, present, and future. And you're the God that keeps covenant. And he says, if, you're gonna, if, if we will believe those two things, we'll take out the giants in this land. If we'll believe that God is bigger than our mistakes and our failures, that when he called us as a nation to do what we do, he knew we would make the mistakes we've made as a nation. He knew the failures we would make, but he's not doing, he didn't raise up this nation based on how good we were, how perfect we would be. He raised up this nation based on his purposes and he's bigger than the failures of people. So the picture of Saul under a tamarisk tree while David is in the cave of Adullam is a mocking spirit sitting under our promise tree. You think you're anointed to be king. You think you will rule this nation. You think Judah belongs to you. Let me go sit under the tamarisk tree and mock you for a while. And your motley army of misfits, impoverished people with nothing, who are discontented and angry at life, and you think you're going to rule this nation? You are a joke, David. Now, does that or does it not sound like what Satan is doing to the church right now? You think there's coming a revival that will reverse what we've accomplished in the last 50 years? You think you're going to get this generation back? That is so confused, they, they, they don't know if they're boys or girls. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, I don't, please, I'm not mocking anybody. My heart breaks over this issue. I saw a picture today, somebody posted on Twitter, of a girl holding up a poster. Looks like she's 15, 16 years old. Big bold letters, I wish my mom had aborted me. And I thought, that, I'm just, it's all I could do on the airplane not to burst out in tears. I thought, that's what we have produced in this nation. We mutilate them. They're confused. And the the older generation is is just as confused and, and, and... we, we're the ones that created the, the problems. But the enemy's sitting back saying, you, th- you think you can reverse this now? And our response must be, no, we don't believe we can, but we know he can. Yeah. We know Olam can do this. And we're not fighting you in our own strength. We have this glove on. You see this? This is the name of the Most High. Who's bigger than time, bigger than our past, bigger than our failures. When he called us to do this, he knew we were going to stumble here, here, here. But he also knew how we would turn out. And he keeps covenant to a thousand generations. And so we need to, we need to be bold enough and strong enough in our hearts to, to address the adversary in this season and say, you can sit under the tree and laugh all you want. But, no, but we are wearing the evergreen glove. And it's on the flag. That's why we appeal. 
to the God of covenant.